Recently, people have been claiming that making AI less racist also makes it less intelligent. And this conclusion was somehow drawn from a blog post from Anthropic discussing their latest experiment on AI interpretability. And oh boy, Twitter loves this narrative. And after thoroughly reading through their experiment, it's clear that some people have definitely jumped the gun, not to mention the fact that this experiment has nothing to do with human intelligence at all. So being racist doesn't reflect how smart you are, sorry to disappoint you 4chan users. But you know what can make you look smart? A standing desk. So of course, the moment when FlexiSpot said that they'll send me one, I have to take it. And the assembling process took about three hours for me. Holy now I look at it, it's it's kind of huge. Wait. <gasps> Yo, what's up guys? Today it's gonna be a slightly different segment. Like, let me show you this. Let me show you this bad boy. So Flexi Spot sent me this um standing table and look at this bad boy. Look at this sturdy, sturdy, st sturdy legs. Look at this. Look at how. Look at how stable this is. You know, this is huge. I even put on my setup. You know, I put on my VS Code just to look smart. Hell yeah! Right. The, the reflection nearly caught me by surprise. These are presets. These are presets. You press between them. They can go up and down, and then they're super sturdy. I don't think I'm supposed to do that while it's inclining or declining, but amazing. I'm gonna completely um, migrate my whole setup to this table. So this is the E7 Plus for leg standing desk. So far, I would say it's really high quality and sitting at a reasonable price, but the deal would only get better because in the up and coming Black Friday and Cyber Monday, you would get some pretty insane discount. And on top of that, you can also use my promo code for $50 off on the E7 Plus standing desk. With 15 year warranty and free return in 30 days, get ready to say goodbye to your back pain and add this bad boy to your workstation using the link down in the description. You also have the chance to win free orders this Black Friday. For more details, you can check out their activity calendar here. And thank you FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. But how did racism even become part of discussion about AI? And how was this idea cherry picked into existence? So let's take a closer look at this pretty interesting experiment Anthropic has been conducting to understand what happens under the hood of AI models, also known as mechanistic interpretability research. I already have a few videos covering their work so far, which you can check out, but essentially, they've been mechanistically analyzing what's happening within the neural networks of AI chatbots by examining activation patterns based on the content they see. Since all the nodes typically activate within a model, they use something called SAE, Sparse Autoencoder, which learns to sparsify the activation patterns to only a handful of neurons so that it's easier to see which neurons are activated when a topic or a feature is presented. So yes, technically, researchers are using AI to interpret AI because there are just way too many nodes to analyze, which is pretty ironic, isn't it? And in this blog, they shared their experiments on steering these features to determine whether this could be a useful and reliable technique for modifying model behavior, and potentially for alignment purposes. They tested 29 features related to social biases from two social bias evaluations, along with MMLU, which involves multiple choice questions to baseline performance after steering. So by analyzing the model's performance when features related to ideologies were steered, the very first thing they saw was a significant problem called off-target bias, where steering a gender bias feature also affected an unrelated feature such as age bias. What's even more confusing is that the gender bias feature didn't activate in age bias related context. So instead of having a simple outcome suggesting that the gender and age bias were interconnected, we saw something more like A equals B but B not equals to A. Adding to this complexity, some features are unsteerable or more like they simply have no effect when steered. For instance, features like discrimination might influence discrimination related outputs but not necessarily necessarily in predictable ways, making it unclear whether they increase or decrease discrimination. So not only can steering have unexpected effects on other biases, it can also be unsteerable in some cases. The weird side effect of off-target bias doesn't just stop here. Regarding political ideologies, it's reasonable to expect that certain ideologies will promote related biases. For example, we might expect a link between a pro-life stance and anti-immigration views as part of a conservative ideology. But what happened was that, on the topic of anti-immigration, steering the pro-life feature which has nothing to do with immigration gave a larger increase in bias than steering the actual anti-immigration feature itself. Specifically, the pro-life feature led to a 21.9% increase while steering anti-immigration directly resulted in just a 3.9% increase, which is absurdly low. This suggests the idea that steering can have unexpected and potentially larger impacts on unrelated or indirectly related topics. This makes steering even 
even less predictable, which is the last thing you would want for something practical. Additionally, steering only works within a certain sweet spot. If you apply too much steering past this range, performance decreases drastically. And this is where the claim that reducing bias or racism decreases performance comes from. This has been completely taken out of context. The general trend is that any factor when steered out of the sweet spot would have a decreased performance, but some people focus solely on the narrative they wanted, which is like people trying to sell you tobacco in the 80s by taking research out of context. And if we use the same illogical logic, then doesn't that mean people that are too racist have decreased performance too? But first of all, how is all this even connected to humans? I swear to god, this has to be a rage bait and I got totally baited. But anyways, is this the dead end of mechanistic interpretability? Is there really nothing we can potentially use out of this? Well, the good news is, they identify neutrality and multiple perspectives features that can consistently reduce biases across the board. While unintended consequences like off-target bias remains unknown, these are still the best methods found for reducing bias without negatively impacting model performance as long as the steering remains within the sweet spot. This research also provided some new perspectives and directions for future work. First, we now know that there's no inherent reason why a feature's activation context should directly correspond to its effect on model outputs during inference. Moreover, there's a discrepancy that shows a more complex relationship between feature activation and output generation. So feature steering may not yet be a reliable way to achieve targeted changes in model outputs and might even be too naive for that purpose. Second, feature steering affects both the input and the output, which may create unintended effects on how the model processes information. The performance decrease when steering outside the sweet spot might have been caused by this process as the model's input and output may be steered away from their original meanings, resulting in the wrong answers. On top of that, feature steering might just be an over-engineered form of prompt engineering, at least for now, as they have found similarities between the effects of these two processes. Maybe feature steering is currently limited by the scale and complexity of SAE, and maybe it might just not be big enough yet to disentangle the intricate relationships. So going down the line, a further exploration of circuits like interconnected groups of neurons that perform specific functions definitely needs to be studied even more. And maybe next time, I'll cover what circuits are and what these amazing researchers have understood so far. If you like today's topic about AI interpretability and want to learn more, I actually have a complete list of papers related to the topic that are filtered and categorized by me, so you can easily explore based on their connections and relations with each other. I'll be publishing three maps up front, one new map every month, and they will be updated every week alongside my weekly paper posts, so the research paper map, or what I like to call it, Project M, will always be up to date with the hot and new papers. Right now, this project is still in its early stage, so it's very rough on the edges, but I have big plans for these research paper maps, and it'll be amazing to have your support early. You can gain partial or full access now by becoming an official or an epic Patreon, and you'll be able to access this project's Discord server for all the updates or chat with me about the papers. Thank you for watching, a big shout out to Andrew Lascellius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Miguelim, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shainer, Marcelo Ferreria, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.